that straight? I think the phone is straight. I think the, the phone is straight and the stand is not. It's weird, okay. Okay. And I'm Layla. Welcome back to our segment, Superfood Sleuths, where we investigate the health food aisle. <laughs> we had a little set change today, and we forgot our magnifying glasses. There also may be like a few set changes over the coming weeks, so just bear with us. Today, we are talking about something that I think is like pretty recently topical. Um, you know, we try and, and Superfood Sleuths go for things that, you know, people are out there wondering about and what they're doing. We are talking about... Laura, Laura Bell. Bell. anyone who's done a between first grade and like 12th grade biology class has heard the word chlorophyll before. It's associated with plants. It, it's what gives them their like bright green fun color. This is definitely bringing back elementary school memories. Chlorophyll is super important because it helps absorb light, um, typically from sunlight, and it helps convert that light energy to chemical energy to fuel plants. In the process known as photosynthesis, which I feel like is a word that I don't think I've used in a very long time. Probably not since grade five. That process of photosynthesis and like the role of chlorophyll is like the only reason that we are alive right now because the plants, they turn the sunlight into energy and then we eat the plants and then we use them for energy. And not only does chlorophyll help plants, chlorophyll might actually help human beings. Or at least that's what people on TikTok keep telling us. So we're gonna start this off by watching a few TikToks. I think if you've been following us for a while, you know TikTok is one of my favorite apps. And one of my proudest things is that I've brought Rubina over to oh the dark my side. God. <laughs> it's, it's the worst. I mean, it's. You can easily lose like two hours in what feels like two and a half minutes. It's the algorithm. It knows you. It does know you. It really knows you. So one thing that uh, did come up on my For You page uh, a couple months ago was a lot of videos about chlorophyll. And I think that TikTok knows that I have a few different interests. One being anything to do with nutrition. Two being anything to do with skin and like having good skin. Because my skin has been something I've been like struggling with for a while. So I feel like it's soft chlorophyll and people talking about chlorophyll for like different things, including skin. I was like, we need to get this to her. This is for Layla. This is for her. That's what kind of inspired this video. So let's start it off by watching some. I know you've pulled up some particular ones. Some particular ones all about chlorophyll. In this TikTok, this plastic surgeon doctor is duetting with um, someone on TikTok that's trying out chlorophyll and she's basically put taking the chlorophyll, it looks like this beautiful, vibrant green liquid and putting it in water and she's saying that it's useful for things like bloating and digestion and inflammation and the plastic surgeon is basically giving his thumbs up and his seal of approval for this product. And I love it when plastic surgeons give nutrition advice. I think that's that's always something that I, I like to see. Yes, he spends his whole day putting in breast implants, but just having that MD afterwards it just, means he knows how you should eat. Here comes the second one. Drinking chlorophyll. I started drinking it because I was interested in the skin healing benefits. I have really bad rosacea and it's been so dry and so flaky this whole year. Nothing's been fixing it. So I've been having about two dropperfuls a day just in some ice water. And I'm actually so surprised by how well this works, guys. Seriously, I've definitely noticed a huge improvement in my inflammation going down. My redness is calmer. My skin texture is the biggest difference. It was so bumpy before, but now it's so much smoother. My makeup is applying better and I haven't had any new flare-ups either. I'm honestly shocked. Definitely gonna keep drinking this. My skin looks so much better under makeup and without it. Love you guys. In this video, someone was talking about taking chlorophyll water um, for rosacea that it seems like she's had for a little while. She says that taking this chlorophyll water has really been helping with the redness and inflammation and bumpiness of her skin while she's been taking it. After taking it for a week. People telling me not to drink chlorophyll water because I'll lose it's weight. It's almost like that's... It's almost like that's the whole point. So in this TikTok, we have a TikToker that's been taking it to lose weight, which mm -hmm. is another claim of this product. So it really seems like the claims behind chlorophyll are why chlorophyll. It's the it's the cure all. It seems like it can affect your skin on the surface, your digestion, your inflammation, your weight loss, your 
bloating. It's just, I mean, what more do you need? Exactly. All the doctors, you're out of work. One thing I think is really interesting is, you know, we talked about the chlorophyll that's in plants, but all of these videos were talking about chlorophyllin, which is the supplement form of chlorophyll. And this is used because it's more stable and it's water soluble, whereas chlorophyll um, is fat soluble and very unstable. Chlorophyll, the thing that comes from plants, has magnesium in the center. So when they're making the chlorophyllin, they basically remove that magnesium and replace it with copper. And then they also remove the hydrophobic tail of the chlorophyll. So hydrophobic it basically means like scared of water, I guess, so it doesn't dissolve in water. So they remove that component of the chlorophyll as well to make the chlorophyll in. TikTokers are not the only people who are interested in the health effects of chlorophyll. Um, there is a little bit of research out there on the impacts of chlorophyll and health, though it is lacking quite a bit. A lot of the research has only been done in animals or in vitro or in really small population sizes or a very long time ago when, you know, some science standards, science standards have really improved since, you know, the 1940s, 1950s. One of the things that chlorophyllin might do is potentially protect us from some harmful chemicals because it seems like chlorophyllin in our digestive tract can bind to things like heterocyclic amines which is something that's produced by things like cooking meat at really high temperatures and it is considered a carcinogen. When you know something like chlorophyll it binds to that it makes a larger molecule and basically makes it harder for your body to absorb it. Because I mean pretty much the entire point of our digestive system is to like break things down into smaller and smaller components so that your body can actually absorb it. But chlorophyllin kind of does the opposite by binding to certain substances and it may in some ways help protect us from them. A lot of the work about heterocyclic amines has only been done in vitro. In vivo, there actually have been studies looking at the effects of chlorophyll on something called aflatoxin, which is a toxin that is often found in grain products that haven't been stored properly. And this is a problem mostly in rural or developing areas of the world, and it can cause uh, many health effects and is even been shown to be carcinogenic or it could cause cancer. And some of these preliminary studies looking at the effects of chlorophyll on aflatoxin, it's been shown that you know, there's less aflatoxin absorbed in the digestive tract because basically the aflatoxin, it's on the grains, you eat it, it gets absorbed and it causes problems. So just like in vitro studies are showing that chlorophyll binds to heterocyclic amines, it appears it also binds to this toxin, making it harder for your body to absorb. Chlorophyll has also been studied for its antioxidant properties. And this is really interesting because, you know, as we've kind of mentioned in a bunch of our other videos, a lot of the bright, vibrant pigments that we see in a lot of our fruits and vegetables, they do pretty much directly represent various antioxidants. And we're seeing that the same might be true with chlorophyll. We do see that in in vitro studies, it does act as an antioxidant. And in mammals, we see that supplementing with chlorophyll can actually help reduce oxidative stress. And if you want to learn about what oxidative stress is, check out our video on antioxidants. One of the most interesting like things, uh, claims that about uh, chlorophyll that have some kind of substantiation or like they're kind of backed up is its effect on body odor. There is some evidence to suggest it is a natural internal deodorant, but not necessarily in the way you think of like underarm deodorant. And the studies from this, like I feel like in, in the 50, 40s and 50s, they were just doing whatever. I'm like, ah, oh, this kind of works. Let's study it. Basically, they were putting chlorophyll on the wounds, uh, uh, on like stinky wounds, um, I think to try and help the skin repair. And they found that actually uh, it made them smell less. And so they're like, let's, let's make them eat it and see what yeah, happens. Exactly. Some people who've had to have their intestines um, partially removed will have something called an ileostomy or a colostomy where um, the after their food is digested, it comes out of something called a stoma 
and that's how they digest their food and excrete um, what's left over. And those patients, because you know their waste is external to their body in a bag, there can be some concern of things like odor or smell. So I think that's why this type of experiment mm -hmm. happened. And you know, the studies are pretty mixed, but there are some studies that show that they do feel like there is less odor after supplementing with chlorophyll. The next bit of deodorizing research that happened was basically looking at people who have incontinence, so they're not either able to hold their urine and use the bathroom or hold their feces and use the bathroom. Some of the studies here did find a benefit for the smell of feces and urine being lower, which is quite, interesting and um what's really interesting though is like a lot of these studies were done in uh hospital settings or in like nursing home settings i am curious about the level of informed consent that went on in these studies also like i know obviously uh, nursing staff are really really busy and like having uh smelly urine and feces is not nice but also it's like a good incentive and like reminder oh hey maybe we should change this person but apparently according to some of the studies that have been done a little while ago it does appear that there is there could be some benefit to chlorophyll it's interesting too because it's subjective ratings right and i feel like i i wonder how how it was rated and I especially think, i think the the odor of urine and your bowel movements can really vary, vary day mm -hmm. to day based on what you eat like hydration so many variables so i i mean i wonder if there was any confounding variables that weren't I'm accounted sure there were. for it's the best evidence we have so but and you know I, I do agree with you. The confounding variables and like bias might be in there. The last thing that has uh, some, some evidence behind it are wound healing. This is not oral um, chlorophyll like ingestion. ingestion, that's the word. <laughs> uh, it's topical uh, chlorophyll that's been used. And what's, what's interesting is there's a lot of commercial products that have chlorophyll in. Fair warning though, the formulation of those topical ointments are of course different from the oral supplements. So we do not recommend taking an oral supplement and using it topically. No, don't do that. One of the really common claims about chlorophyll that you hear on TikTok are things about acne. And you mentioned that that's probably how TikTok weaved in and got into <laughs> your for you page. And it's interesting because, you know, but looking at the research, there is some very early preliminary research with the topical use of chlorophyll. So for example, there was one trial done on literally only 10 people with mild to moderate acne. And it did seem like in those individuals that it seemed to help their acne as well as with things like pores after three weeks of use. However, again, this is with using topical ointments of chlorophyll and it's not it's not comparable to what you might see with ingesting it, oral chlorophyll. Unfortunately, the evidence with taking oral supplements of chlorophyll in terms of skin health is completely lacking, but I do wonder if, so, if some of the claims are coming from the early research that we see with topical use. Perhaps they're extrapolating it and assuming that the mechanism would be the same. I'm going to say the mechanism, not the same. It can't be the same. same. In some of the TikToks you watch, as well as some of the other ones that have come up on my For You page, you see claims around weight loss, around alkalization of the body, and around digestion. Well, I'm going to start off by saying digestion and uh, weight loss, those are two real things. There's actually, unfortunately, no evidence supporting either of those two claims. I have seen some TikToks of people saying it really is helping with their digestion and bloating. And if that's the case, like more power to it, to, to you, go nuts with your chlorophyll if you really want to. The claim around alkalization of the body, not a real thing, unless you're in acidosis, in which case you'd probably be at the hospital. Alkalization of the body is not really real and drinking slash having chlorophyll wouldn't really help with that, especially because we don't really know anything about its absorption and bioavailability in the body. It's not really any way to show that having like 10 milliliters of that would change the pH of your whole entire body, that your body works so hard to keep in line. Should we give this a try? Yeah, uh, sure. Okay, so we're gonna try it straight up. Uh, I think. Yeah, all the TikToks I saw, people were dissolving it in like a glass of water, but this, the instructions say 
to just straight up take one teaspoon twice daily. All right. So that's what we're gonna that's do. That's what we do. Because that's what she's forcing me to do. Exactly. <laughs> Here's a spoon for you. Thank you. All right. I'm a little nervous because this is very steady stuff. Mmm. Are we doing a full teaspoon? No, 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 no. We'll that's do one okay, dropper. right? Yeah, yeah. It's like a very dark, dark, dark green liquid. I would show you, but I'm so worried about spilling it. Okay. Okay, all right. I am really nervous. Cheers. Cheers. Okay. This... Oh. Oh. Okay. Oh. That was... Hmm. Strangely sweet. No. Is there is green Please. on your lips? <laughs> There's green on your teeth. Anyway, we're gonna finish this video green. That's the way. That's the way she goes. This is show business. You have to keep going. I'm gonna add that to one of the side effects of uh, or like risks, I guess, of taking yeah. the Advil. Honestly, though, what did you think? Was it better? I thought it was gross. Try it in the water. Okay. Try it in the water. I'm gonna. No. Yeah. Please. Okay. Full disclaimer: I actually did end up buying some and taking it because you know. Okay, well, you tell us, did it help you with your skin? Because that, that was your absolutely motivation, not. right? Literally, absolutely not. Wow, it really, really... Wait, why do I get so many dropfuls? Because you got clear skin, I don't know. It's just the most beautiful skin I've ever seen in my time. No, you gotta stir it, you gotta stir it. Oh. It's, it's nicer. Oh, I mean, it, yeah, it's a lot, it's diluted, so obviously. Yeah, but it's like not, it's a drinkable, right? It's drinkable, I and mean, it doesn't taste like much, to be honest. It has like a slight tea feeling yeah. to it. But like, yeah, nothing more. Okay. I guess if you need motivation to hydrate, you could put this in there. Rating time? We're rating this? We're <laughs> rating it. I would give taste a one out of 10. I think we've had worse things in this. No. I'm giving the taste a two out of ten. Which one was worse? The the alkaline water was. Oh, that bad. was that's worse than this. That was pretty bad. That was worse than this by far. Okay, maybe a one point five out of okay. ten. All right, color. It's fun. What it looks like. It's so fun. I I mean I enjoy green. I like green. I'm giving it looks a eight out of ten. Look, look how pretty it looks in the water. I feel like on camera. Does it look black? I to you guys? Look black, but uh, it looks very black to me. It's very dark green. I'm gonna give it. A seven out of ten. I don't even know. And then what else do we normally rate? Smells? Smell. Smell it doesn't, anything. there's no smell. There's no smell. I did actually take it for like a whole entire month. Uh, it didn't do anything, so I don't think I would take it again. And also it made my feces bright green. That that seems terrifying. And I don't know if this was because of the chlorophyll or just my own digestive problems, but like I felt like everything was a little looser. That's like not a documented side effect, but it is Something that I experienced. And That's interesting, and especially you took it for a full month, yeah. so it's probably not tied to any other food or anything. But there are other side effects that have been um, documented, typically with topical application. So it's like pretty safe for like oral use as long as you don't mind green poop. But when people apply it to their skin, there are reports of irritation and also some rashes that it can occur. If you want to avoid all that, lucky for you, there are natural sources of chlorophyll. As we mentioned in the beginning, chlorophyll is found in plants. So chlorophyll is very much in a lot of dark green leafy vegetables, things like spinach and parsley and arugula. You already know that the vegetables are good for you for so many other reasons. So if you need another reason to eat your greens, chlorophyll might be one, but eat your veggies. Eat your veggies. <laughs> That's gonna be our takeaway yes. from every video. Oh, eat your veggies. Thank you for watching. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss a video. And follow us on our Instagram and TikTok. Thanks for watching. Bye. Bye.